Before we get started, let's thank our sponsors. Ocean Breeze Tiki Bar and Grill. Are you hosting a special event or a party? Let us take care of you. Call us today for all the details. 386-847-8887. Ask for Barbara. Again, that's Ocean Breeze Tiki Bar and Grill. 521 Flagler Ave, New Smyrna Beach, Florida. We'd also like to thank Manscaped.com, the best for the the below-the-waist grooming and hygiene. Manscaped.com. Use code DVA20 for 20% off and free shipping. Thank you, Manscaped.com. Hey, guys. Before we go bananas with the UFC vet, Eric Showtime Shelton, let me talk to you about my friends at End Still Nutrition. Check out the website at endstillnutrition.com. They have tons of great products that I use daily for one, the pre-workout, the fat burner, and of course, probably my personal favorite, the joint pain, something that we all get later in life. So make sure you go to endstillnutrition.com. Also, when you're online, check out warhammerfightwear.com. Some of the great, great wear in all of MMA. They got stuff for ladies. They got stuff for the kids. And, of course, the men. They got some of the best stretchy pants for the girls. My wife loves it. But also, they have a great hat I wear on the weekends. I love it, guys. Warhammerfightwear.com. Check them out. Guys, it's time to go bananas with Eric Shelton. All right, guys. Here we go. UFC veteran, my main man, Eric Showtime Shelton. How you doing, brother? Good. How you doing, boss? Doing real good, man. Doing real good. Enjoying the night. Um, kind of funny. I was going to leave on this, but I'll start with it and uh, see how the conversation goes. But uh, on your Instagram, it says proud father, UFC veteran. And uh, even just this little interview, I just put my two uh, boys to sleep. They got new bunk beds and I just, you said the same thing. Hey man, the kids are up a little bit. Uh, so let's start there, man. How does it to be a fighter slash, uh, you know, father? Is it hard or is it the exact opposite? Do they just motivate you to become the best man you can be, the best fighter you can be, uh, so on and so on? I uh, mean, I have to say it, it's it's both, you know, they definitely motivate me, you know, but there's days in the gym where, you know, they're hyper and I can't focus on training. So I guess it goes hand in hand, you know, but they definitely been my motivation to get where I'm at, I believe. So, you know, I'm, I'm blessed to have my babies, you know. Absolutely, man. Nothing else. Everything else is great. Um uh... Uh, there's some moments in life that being a father is just nothing better. Um, yeah. You know, with that, I saw, I've seen some pictures lately uh, with your coach in the gym. I've been seeing you picking it up a little bit. Is there something in the near future for you? Are you getting into a training camp? Um, I'm trying to get ready to stay ready. You know, okay. um, I just, I want to, I have a, there's talks of a bare knuckle, bare knuckle match coming up. So that's wow. in the works possibly. Um, you know, they're again, in Tampa my- next month. Yeah, man. Uh, I'm getting ready for, for uh, hopefully get on the card October. That's what I'm looking for. Wow. The uh, main event, uh, Bigfoot Silva, Gabriel Gonzalez. Uh, Jim Allers has been on fire for bare knuckles. He's been on the show before. Uh, Mike Tyson, a bare knuckle, you can call it. They're, they do have a lot of momentum. So that's something that you're interested in? Yeah, I mean, um, it's something I'm, I just want to get something going again, man. I want to get back to the UFC. Obviously, that's my goal, man, to sure. be the, the UFC champ. So sure. right now, just get something going, uh, get some money in my pocket to, you know, so I can focus more on training. So, you know, this, I think I can go out there and put on a fight and show, show the fans that I'm still gritty. You know, I'm down to go in there and bang, man. You know, maybe change a little momentum of my, my, the way things have been going, you know? Okay. No, I feel you on that. And the, probably the last thing with bare knuckle, we'll let it go. It's so funny. I had a conversation with a promoter here in Florida about it is, uh, so they, you know, toe the line, they get right to it. And, you know, probably half the fighters or 60%, as soon as they toe the line, they start, they kind of back away and almost like a UFC fight. You kind of, you know, square up and get whatever. Some fighters though, and just like Jim Allers is one of them, as soon as they go, go, Jim Allers has got the overhand right. He's flying it. It's like toe the line. Like he doesn't want to fight long. He wants to get in, get the knockout, get out. Get out, yeah, man. That's, That's how some of them guys. Are. I've been watching the fights, and they're exciting. You know, it's it's exciting. But you see different types. You know, you see the guys that are super technical, like you said, that back up and and they touch. You know, touch, touch, touch. But then there's guys that are super crazy, man. And it's exciting, man. I'm kind of excited to see how it goes. If, if it's if it so happens, you know. Wow, I'll be excited, man. Tampa in October, uh, very cool. If that happens, we'll definitely talk to you real soon with that. Um, you know, we been down there, saw you down there, American Top Team, Coconut Creek, and I definitely want to talk to you about that gym. Some of the fighters there, the momentum. 
is this unbelievable? I don't know if it's just because I'm just more attached to it, a little bit more closer. I talk to some of the guys all the time there, or is it just you guys feel it? The Jorge Mazadov momentum, the Dustin the Diamond momentum, Greg Hardy's on fire, some of the girls down there. That just that gym, your gym is on fire. Do you guys feel that? Dude, I mean, the, the atmosphere when you go in there is just like you can just feel it. You know, it's get yes. in there, get to work. You know, you got something to prove is when you step in that room. You know, the guys have, have made legends of that gym, you know, and, and coaches and everybody there just motivated. So it's 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 hard not to go in there and not be motivated to push yourself. So I definitely feel the fire and I'm getting I'm getting lit up right now. You know, <laughs> that's so funny. You said that I I actually you nailed it. I've been into so many gyms and. When you walk into American Top Team down there at Coconut Creek, you do. You feel something. Like, you're like, whoa. Like, if you're not on A plus game, Jose Shorty Torres is going to put you on your ass for 15 straight minutes. Mike Beast Boy Davis is going to pound you into the ribs. You know, Chase Batwell, a kid that's flying up the right. You know, it's just, there's so much talent. Um, you know, amateur to pro. We just had Ryan Quinn on who talks a lot about the amateur fighters. He goes, it's, it's the best it's ever been. The amateurs down there at ATT is just on, you know, on fire. That's crazy. Uh, I think you nailed it with that. Just that momentum and that fire in that gym is just insane. It's crazy, man. I love going in there. Definitely love it. My kids are comfortable in there. It's just, just a good atmosphere, man. Uh, very true. Um, another guy who likes it down there too, and I missed him by 20 minutes. I missed you, I think, by uh, 15 minutes that day. I leave, and then all of a sudden I see 100 pictures with American Top Team with Shaquille O'Neal. And a, uh-huh. lot of, <laughs> a lot of them were good. You had the best one with your height to Shaq's height. You had the kid with you. It was just like it was one of those incredible viral pictures. I loved it. So how was Shaq? Uh, you know, did, how long was he there? He was there for a couple of days shooting something, right? Yeah, he was in there shooting. Uh, I believe with uh, he worked with Greg. He worked with a couple of the big guys. Got to grapple, and then he did a grappling match out there. I seen. Um, so yeah, he's just out there getting work. Probably a little bit of publicity stuff too, as well. Sure. But uh, man, getting to meet him though, man, was crazy. You know, he's he's a giant, man. My daughter was just kind of scared when she seen him. She was like, oh, well, <laughs> she didn't know what to think, man. But it was it was cool, man. He was like, well, it was, call me Uncle Shaq. He was just a nice guy, man. Big. Big humble beast, man. For sure, for sure. You know how the kids are when they see Santa Claus or the Easter Buddy, or you know they see Captain America at Universal Studios. When they see Shaq, that's like, what? What the? Yeah. And right in the head, <laughs> right, right. In the were you a sports fan? Were you a basketball fan growing up? Uh, my dad was. Okay. Uh, I kind of watched a little bit, but never really was into like. I mean, I played sports as a kid, but never really was into watching it that much. Still not into it that much. But, okay, straight, you know. just straight MMA. Yeah, straight MMA. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, you know, you're a flyweight yourself, so I got to ask you about the flyweights, uh, Henry Cejudo. Uh, what do you think right now about the UFC landscape? That de- You know, with him winning that title, he hasn't defended it yet. What do you think about that? So just kind of your, you know, your judgment on the UFC, UFC flyweight landscape. Uh, you know, it's been... It's been a little sketchy, you know. The, it was sketchy at first, but now I feel like it's starting to pick up with him... Uh, getting the title, you know, going to 35, getting that. And then I've seen fights like, uh, you know, uh, Pantoja, and um, he fought another guy, another one of the flyweights. I can't really think of his name. Uh, Brazilian guy. He's a top, top, top three. They fought. They had a good fight. Um, Joe B's got momentum rolling right now. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, Danger went back down, got a win. He's on a four-fight win streak. You know, there's a lot of guys right now that I think they're they're trying to build up to – you know, possibly bring back the flyweight division. So I'm hoping that's the case because that's that's obviously where I want to be. That's where I want my home to be. So, you know, if so, it's worse because the worst 35 would be the move, though, definitely. Yeah, and, like, it, there's no middle ground. People love Henry Cejudo or they really, really dislike him. I don't want to use that H word, but they, it, it's, there's just no yeah. middle ground. Where do you lie in the Henry Cejudo love or dislike? <laughs> <laughs> You know, Cejudo, you know, he's a character, man. I, I had the chance to hang out with him a little bit on the Ultimate Fighter. He was one of the coaches uh, the, of the season I was on. So I got to get to know him a little bit before he became the Triple C or whatever. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he's he's playing his role. You know, I, I'm not a hater by any means. He's playing his role, and, and, I, and I'm, I'm feeling it because it's bringing light to the division, you know. For sure. So, for sure. You saw that Definitely video? You saw that video he put out with the diapers and the titles up there oh, calling out Dominic yeah, Cruz? 
I'm like, I'm it's like comedy, man. It's comedy, you know. <laughs> oh, absolutely, man. It's at the end of the day. I all the fighters I talk to all the time, and uh, you know, so many of them's like, at the end of the day, it's entertainment. Uh, people spend on a Saturday night their hard earned money, and it's like it is what it is. And Henry's getting people, you know, love or hate. He's getting people in, and you know, he's invoking emotion. Uh, so you know, yeah. he he's pulling people in. Uh, that's funny. You said Ultimate Fighter too. That's one of my notes. Uh, you know, being an Ultimate Fighter alum, another thing I think has crazy great momentum in the UFC is that Dana White Contender Series show on fire as well. Uh, my main man Brock Weaver a couple weeks ago, Phil Rowe, Orlando Fusion XL guy just got in. Just the show itself is just uh tremendous. Tuesday night, no one's you know no one goes out on a date on Tuesday night. They're watching fights. That's what it is on a Saturday night. Once in a while, you know, UFC 242, I tell the wife and the kids, hey, hey, Dustin's fine. I got to go there. And we'll go there in a second. But if it's not a big pay-per-view, you know, I got to give the wife and the family Saturday night. But Tuesday night at 9 o'clock, I'm watching fights. I think it's uh, yeah. it's it's unreal, right? Yeah, it's perfect. It's a perfect setup, man. And then they got guys coming in there trying to earn that contract. So they're fighting to the, you know, they're fighting tooth and nail trying to get that dub, man. And it's cool because you see so many finishes. You see so many you know, guys I've seen fight on there that I wasn't too impressed with, like, throughout their career. They get on there and they actually show up. It's pretty crazy, man. That show's awesome. It is. It is. And if I was someone growing up, I just think that the, the contender is the way to go. The ultimate fight is so tough, man. You're in the room and, you know, in that yeah. environment for 50 days. You're not talking to the family. You're not, you know, you're not seeing what's up. And it's just like contender series. You fly out of Vegas on a Saturday. You make weight on Monday. You fight Tuesday and you go home. It's – I. It's Jeez. tremendous for young fighters. Tremendous. It, it, it may, it's it's huge too, man. Because you know what? On the Ultimate Fighter, those fights you do fight, they don't count for your record. So the, if you're winning, you know you you're still fighting, but you, it's not going. It's not benefiting you by any way. You know, I beat some tough guys on there, but they're not on my, you know, resume. So it's it's it sucks in that way too. But contender, man, it's it's. I think it's awesome that they count that as your record, man. You go there, you only fight that one time, and you know that's it. That's awesome. For sure, for sure. Uh, we talked about it. We definitely hit on it, so we will go there. UFC 242 next Saturday night, Dustin the Diamond Party versus Khabib. Like, this fight might be the most important fight in the UFC all year. Maybe not the biggest, maybe not the best, but, but to me, I think it's the most important. It's got so many layers to it. Who, If Dustin wins this fight, I can argue he's the biggest star in the company. Uh, and, and if Khabib wins this fight, the man's undefeated. And sometimes I feel like he's almost underrated in a way. But, you know, if he puts down Dustin, yeah. if he puts down Khan or if, he, you know, everyone on the way up, uh, Ray Janow, you got to give this man credit where credit's due. But, you know, I know American top team loyal is probably going to go with Dustin the Diamond. I'm leaning that way, too, with the upset. What do you feel? UFC 242, lightweight unification title match, Dustin or Habib? I uh, definitely got to go with Dustin, you know, just, uh, of course, his teammate. But I get to see the guy train his ass off you know part of my language but he just he trains his butt off man and he 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 overworks you know and I feel like that's gonna pay off all these years he's put in you know it's just uh it would be awesome to see him get his hand raised man and um you know you can never underrate uh underrate uh Khabib's wrestling but I've seen Dustin just he's hard to take down by any guy in the gym so it's gonna I think he's gonna shock the world with that as well keeping it standing and fighting to get to his feet if he does get down you know yeah no I agree. Uh, if he can keep him standing, and I know he's scrappy enough, he's long enough, he's lean enough to kind of get Habib off of him. I really like that. And then I just like his Dustin can hurt fighters in multiple different ways and multiple different angles. He doesn't need just to be standing up throwing a jab. Like inside, boom, throws the short elbow. I really like Dustin in this fight. I really do. Um, you know, I saw him a little bit training only a couple days there, but you said you're there all the time. You see him running. You see him working his tail off. The ma- one thing I like what he says, 25 minutes to change the rest of his life. It's just, I, I love it. I can't wait for this fight. UFC 242, Dustin. Yeah, that's the plan, man. I hope he gets the dub, comes home with the belt again, gets the shiny belt, <laughs> and gets the, the O off of Khabib's record. That's that's the plan for sure. I know it. Sooner or later, all the O's leave. That's just what it is yeah. in the game, right? They, they got to go sooner or later. Uh, talking about leaving and coming back, I just – UFC, it's amazing to me, five years ago, ten years ago, I saw your first amateur fight, right, 2010? Is that yeah. Would you think in 2010, 
Reebok and ESPN would be like connected to the UFC. Isn't that just it, it's it's mind blowing nowadays, right? It is. It's crazy that they're it's it's go, it's go, blowing up fast, man. You know, I mean, but you see the stars coming out of the sport, and it, and I think it has no you know option but to blow up like that. Yeah. So it's it's only like this. It's only going to get bigger and badder. Uh, it's it's yeah. insane. And talking about bigger and better, how about uh, next? I think it's like two Saturdays from now, September 14th, Vancouver, one of the best main events, uh, Cowboy Cerrone and Justin Gaethje. What do you think about that fight? That's insane, man. <laughs> I've always been a Cowboy fan, you know. But Gaethje, he, he he earned me over with all his fights. Dude. He's just a he's just an animal, bro. I've never seen someone like that cat. Yeah. Um, I'd, I'd have to say Eddie Alvarez is the closest to that. And, man, he's, he's even more so, you know. Yeah. Tougher than him. I think if they fought, right, and he beat Eddie, right? He did. He did. Uh, the most violent man in the world, they called that fight. Yeah, it was insane. <laughs> yeah, he's just a, he's a go-getter. But thing about Cowboy, he's been showing up every fight lately. It used to be, you know, what Cowboy's going to show up. But, I like, since he had that baby, man, he's been a different animal. So it's like uh, – that's a tough one to call. It That's is a tough one to call. Dad Cerrone, man, he's he's been on fire now. I, I, you know, the eye poke happened and all that, and you wish you. I think we're gonna see that fight again. I think we will see Ferguson Cowboy down the road. Oh man, yeah. it was always great talking to you. Probably the last thing, and then definitely, you know, any kind of sponsors, teammates, anything you want to push out, uh, definitely hit it. Um, but you know, no one's watching. This is just between you and me. This Mazadov uh, Diaz fight, this is happening, right? This is that's going down. It's a, dude, I hope so, bro. I really hope so. <laughs> I mean, I've seen Mazda in the gym, so he, it's. I think that's calling for something. You know, I think that means something. Oh my gosh! He's, he's and working. and that's I think a, they should put them both on the same card. They should do probably the co-main Mazda Diaz and the main event. They should go with that Usman versus Colby fight, and just like yes. that, that would be insane. Because then, like. Whoever wins, of course, the co-main, they can stay there and look the man in the face. And it was so crazy. I talked to Ryan Quinn about it. If Mazadoff and Colby wins and them two, just an all-American top team, welterweight title yeah. fight, that's insane. But we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But we, the yeah. world, every little mixed martial arts fan in the world wants to see Mazadoff diaz It's just, that's gold, Dana. You know, oh, print money. Sign them checks. <laughs> <laughs> Sign those checks. That's Sign the those. best goal for sure, man. I've been waiting to see that for a long time. And now they are both got the star power, dude. They're just going to – that's going to be sick. It is, man. It is. Okay. Like I said, the floor is yours. Uh, anyone you want to thank, sponsors, push, Instagram, uh, e show, uh, you know, e Showtime, right? Yeah, e Showtime's on uh, Instagram. Yeah. Um, obviously, when I think never been stronger, that's my people been with me for a long, long time. Uh, first round management, uh, American top team, of course. I love that gym, man. All my coaches there. Uh, and then I got a new new CBD sponsor, uh, Creating Better Lives as well, man. They're they're awesome. Been been hooking me up with good good products. But other than that, man, you know it was awesome coming on the show and talking with you, man. I've been waiting to get on here. All right, definitely, man. We'll see you down there. I love going down American Top Team. It's my favorite gym in the world. There's just nothing like it. Uh, I'll be down there soon. I'll see you soon. And hopefully uh, when that bare knuckle news, if that hits, we'll, we'll we'll talk about it for sure. We'll get you right back on. Definitely. All right, Appreciate man. You, Appreciate you. I'll talk to you soon. All right, guys, that was it. My main man, Eric Showtime Shelton, coming on the show. We appreciate that, man. I'm telling you guys, give him a follow on Instagram, E Showtimes. Great follow, great family man. Nothing but major love to him. Hey, guys, you know what it is. Fight Bananas official. Check us out on the IG. Slide in those DMs. Always, you know, get those questions in there. We'll definitely hit them up. Q&A, put down your city. Put down what you want to know. Slide in. Fight Bananas official in the DMs. Guys, thank you so much for listening. YouTube, subscribe to the Fight Bananas channel. It's on fire. Subscribe to Fight Bananas on YouTube. Have a blessed day. Have a great night. We'll talk to you soon.